If there's one topic that is more widely misunderstood in the world of vinyl playback than skating force, I don't know what that would be. There's so much misunderstanding and bad information on what causes skating force, what to do about skating force, whether it's even something we need to, to manage or can benefit from managing. Well, I want to see what I can do to perhaps put an end to that for a lot of you. This will be a four-part soundbite series on skating force. First episode, this one, we're going to go into what is the cause of skating force. Second video, we will discuss how skating force actually can vary depending on characteristics of the tone arm. Third, we'll go into what is the lost opportunity if you do not manage the skating force by using an anti-skating force. And what's the cost? And lastly, the fourth video on how not to apply anti-skating force. This will be kind of a fun one because there's a lot of bad ideas out there that I'd like to address. One of the criticisms laid at the feet of proponents like myself of managing skating force with an anti-skating force is that, well, what does it matter? Skating force varies across the surface of the record all the time anyway, so it's totally inexact. So the amount of skating force that exists at any one point during the playback of the record, it varies, and therefore anti-skating should vary. But, well, for the most part, it doesn't on most arms. This is correct. But let's put that in perspective. There are two essential components that are necessary for skating force to exist at all. First, you need a frictional force. That is provided by the stylus coursing through the groove. The stylus groove uh, union, that's where that friction comes from. Secondly, you need something called effective moment arm. That is a lot of what this video series will be talking about. You will see that effective moment arm actually changes its force across the record, depending on where you're playing. And of course, friction changes as well as you play. When the groove content is high amplitude music, you know, say the crescendo in a symphonic piece, well, that is a higher frictional component during that passage. During the quieter passages, it's lower friction. And every time that frictional force changes, skating force changes. My response to the people who say, it varies so much, so why are we bothering, is that, well, we know the bounds. We know where the man minimum and maximum skating force are, and they can be calculated. And we know, uh, for the most part, where skating force spends most of its time. Like any varied data set, you can put it on a distribution curve and look and see where is the bulk of the data. Form your bell curve, look at your tails. We don't need to worry about the tail for the lowest frictional component. We need to worry more about the higher frictional component and where the bulk of the skating force lies, that is where we will aim for our anti-skate force. In this short video series, we are going to focus our attention on effective moment arm, principally because that is the one of the two elements that constitute skating force that is most widely misunderstood. So here's a depiction of the platter surface and a tone arm. I'm doing this in the CAD software. This is a 200, this line represents a 229 millimeter effective length tone arm. This number down here, 211, is its pivot to spindle distance. Now, I'm able to change the playing radius simply by changing this number. You'll see here the, the playing radius. So we're going to start at the outer area of the record. I want to draw your attention over here at the effective moment arm. This is an effective moment arm. Effect, this is the arm that, this is the lever arm that creates that inward force a lot, once frictional force is present at the stylus that causes the arm to move towards the center of the platter. Now, how do you find the effective moment arm? It's simple. You attach one, one end of the line at the pivot point, you draw up here, raw, uh, start a, a second line at a 90 degree angle, must be 90 degrees, 
that finds its way to the stylus, and then another 90 degree uh, line that finds its way to the spindle. So look at this value, this is millimeters, and the length of this moment arm defines its force potential. So the sh smaller that number, the lower the force. And you'll notice at 146 millimeters playing uh, radius, which is the outer area of the record, it's at about 100. All right. Now what happens when we bring it to the innermost? Now it's at 96, so it's about 4% less. The skating force is actually 4% less at the IEC minimum playing radius of a record. And you will see if we go to about 90 millimeters radius, it's at 89, so which is 11 percent less than the maximum. So as you can see, skating force, ver uh, skating force will vary independent of friction depending on where you are on the playing surface. Highest at the outside comes to its minima somewhere around 90 millimeters radius and then it goes up again steeply until you get to your 60 millimeter mark. So see what has happened here. Assuming that frictional force remains the same across the playing surface, skating force will actually decrease by 11% from its highest point, which is at the outer area of the record, to its minimum, which is somewhere around 90 millimeters playing radius. And then following that, as it continues to course towards the second center of the, the uh, record, it goes up steeply again. And then at 60 millimeters playing radius, it's still about, what did I say, 5% less than, than it is at its maximum. So as you can see, the concept of effective moment arm and its integral role in creating a skating force is pretty simple. I, for one, can't explain why there has been so much confusion about this, even amongst engineers, and continue to be amongst engineers um, to this day. There's even been some erroneous claims in IEC published papers about this, but guess that's what it's there for, for peer review. Now that you know what effective moment arm is, next video we'll be discussing how it changes depending on variations in arm design.